Yes. In a way, I feel like men do do that because why? Back then, they didn't want me. Now that I'm on, they all on me. It's, why that's y'all trying not to, how it goes. It don't matter. I <laughs> paraphrased, okay? Preachers paraphrase scripture all the time, so I could paraphrase a rap song. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the first episode, aka the pilot episode of our brand new podcast slash web series. All of a sudden, I'm Juice. And I'm Nakara. No, don't get nervous now. (laughs) Don't get nervous. But this is a fun little podcast that we want to come up with. The comedy podcast where we basically talk about everything. We keep it a bean. This is going to be raw, uncut. uh, Straight to the point. Straight to the point. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we're going to keep it real. So hope you guys are going to enjoy this podcast. We're going to have a little fun with it. We also want to have you guys' suggestions on what we should talk about here on a week-to-week basis. This is going to be on all platforms. So before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that like and that bell because not only is this a podcast, but there's visuals to it. So make sure you watch it on YouTube and then go ahead and stream it on all your favorite platforms um, and take a listen, man. You can listen in a car or you can listen... While you at work, or you can listen, I don't know, wherever people listen to stuff at. So we're going to get straight into the it. The gym? Yes. <laughs> Where we should be I going. I heard it's a but, new thing, yeah. Yeah, we, we should be in the gym, the gym, but you know what I'm saying? You, you know, things happen. So, but yeah, we're going to get started. So there's going to be a couple of different elements. You know, every week is going to be something different. We just want to have some fun for y'all to tune into, to listen to. So, Nakara, before we get started... You know, what's what's new in your life? <laughs> um, what's new in my life? Well, I am newly engaged. A fiancé, a whole fiancé. Congratulations to me. Facts. You can show on the ring if you want to. You know what I'm saying? That camera for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> things I did. That. <laughs> nah. But that's what's up. So, but, you know what I'm saying? We don't want this to be like a stereotypical, you know, like couples relationship podcast because there's so yeah. many of those, right? We want to have something that's flavorful that you can see both our personalities. You'll get to know us a lot during this podcast and everything, the things that we, you know what I'm saying, that we talk about. So, but I'm going I'm to I'm start it this time. You know, if you watch Cooking Up, you know, every mm-hmm. time, every other episode, we take turns. So I'll let her take the turn next week. But this week, I want to start it off. I want to start it off straight with the raw, right? Okay. So... I was uh I was watching or listening to the Steve Harvey morning show, right? And they had this thing called Strawberry Letters. Now, they got this thing called Strawberry Letters. I love listening to these Strawberry Letters. If you don't know what this is, it's basically where people write Steve and they basically tell him about a crazy problem that's going on. Now, I want to hear your opinion on this topic, right? So, this is what happened. So, there's this this lady, she was writing, well, it's a guy Guy was writing uh, the strawberry letters to Steve about a situation that he put that he is in right now, right? So he has an ex wife, right? He has an ex wife, oh, and I so this one. yeah, yeah. I think we was we was literally driving mm. when we heard it. So he has an ex wife, and his ex wife was basically telling him that, oh, I want another child, like, and I guess she loaned him some money or something. She's making a lot of money. Him and his wife are currently. I don't know if they're in financial. These situations, he didn't really talk about that, but um, she said that she wants another kid, and she was like, I want to have another kid, but I want all my kids to have the same dad, like them two, they had kids together, and she's like, I want my kids to have the same dad, so she basically told him, I, I can't make this up, you guys can go check this out for yourself, I even looked it up on an article, she told him that she would pay him $25,000 if she would get him pregnant mm. to have the kid. Now, he said in the letter, he was like, I mean, we're not struggling financially, but we could really use $25,000. I don't know anybody who couldn't use $25,000. You know what I'm saying? $25,000, that's a lot of it's a lot of money, especially when you're trying to plan a wedding. That'll, that'll, <laughs> that'll make everything feel a lot smoother. Don't okay. be getting no ideas now. No, Move oh, back to old baby I don't have, mamas. I don't have no baby mamas. I don't <laughs> have no 
ex wives. So basically, my question. So his question was like, should I do it? Should I not? Like, what? What should I do? Now I want to hear your perspective because basically during this podcast, Nakar represents all of y'all women out there at this podcast, and I represent the fellas during this podcast. So we're gonna have some stuff where we talk about where we break down stereotypes about men and women. We're gonna have all types of stuff. So I want to know your perspective. How do you feel? Say if it was me, right? This is hypothetical, 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 because I know how y'all be acting. So say if, you, you know, you can scoot up a little bit towards the camera and all that, because make sure that camera getting you, you know. Oh. <laughs> but hypothetically, if I had an ex-wife, right, and mm-hmm. my ex-wife, and I had a child with this woman, and she came to me and said, 25K. <laughs> Sorry. And she basically said, 25K. It's the racks for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and she said, Every time you say 25K, this mic falls. Yeah, because the mic knows what's up. <laughs> so if she came, if my ex-wife came to me and was like 25K uh, for her to have another kid, and I presented that to you, as you represent, I literally saw that happen this time. <laughs> this We should have a, a full camera. It's just The shot camera, that's what we're going to call it. The, no, not the shot camera, like the goofy camera. That's what we're going to call it. Goofy cam, goofy moments, and we're going to use this sound effect for the goofy moments in the podcast. But! Anyways, so, if I came to you and was like, hey, my ex-wife just hit me up. She wants to have a baby, but she wants me, she's going to pay me $25,000 to have her baby. What would you say? What do you think I would say? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, I would, it's a definite no. Um, like a definite no? Like yeah, it couldn't like, even persuade you? I wouldn't want to live for the moment for a lifetime. Like that makes sense. Like I wouldn't want to live in the moment for a lifetime um, effect. Like, you know, where. We've set some things up to where in our future we'll be touching more mm-hmm. than uh, $25,000. So, it, I mean, you know, like, so it's I received that. $25,000 to um, basically have another commitment with a person that you're no longer dealing with. Another commitment extended. Would it would it be a commitment? So what if she was like, what if she was like, okay, I I just want you to be, I just want you to like give me the kids, so I know where like where the kids traits is coming from. But I don't, you don't really have to do much. Like, what would you say then? Um, like she just like I just want another child, and tell her to adopt one. That's a valid answer. Yeah. Like, why do you have, why does she feel like you would have to be a part of that? Like, you know. Well, she says she want all her kids to have the same dad. Well, that's just a want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we we all can't have what we, uh, what we want these days. So. That's a hard no. That's a hard, it's a hard, it's an easy no. Like, It's an easy no? Easy no. You 25 wouldn't even, bands. I feel like. Like, what is that? What is twenty five thousand dollars? Yeah, for you to for you to have another child with a woman that you're you're obviously yeah you obviously got a divorce for a reason. Okay. So why would you put yourself in another predicament? She's gonna be pregnant. She's gonna have emotions. You know, she's gonna she's gonna be pregnant. She's gonna have emotions and like, what is she? Like, what can you get out of this? Out of, other than money. Other than money, uh, money. All right, so that so that's that's a pretty deep perspective, and I feel like a lot of women would be on your side on that one. Like mm. they'll be like, "No, nah, that's a hard no." Now, let me put it in a perspective for for men, right? Because men, we I'm not trying to say we think logically, but we also like always are thinking about finances i mean you know that about me all the time like i'm always thinking about finances sometimes mm-hmm. a little too much right and so when i when i heard it i was like dang my first instinct was like twenty five thousand dollars. 
That's a that's a smooth like that's that's cool. That's an easy come up. That's like on a, I mean on a good day. That's like fifteen minutes work. But of that work. also explains why men are so quick to get a female pregnant because they're in the moment, mm. right? It's just like that twenty five thousand dollar come up real quick. Like, oh, I can get this off and. You know, no, we definitely can get it off, or you know, or whatever, and you end up like you thinking about the moment. You're not thinking about daycare and uh, paying paying for rent and paying for food and milk, diapers. You're not thinking about that in the moment. You're thinking about a but, quick low come up. No, that's true. But what if? So what I got from it was she was gonna handle all of like the child she just wants the child to be from the same dad so in my in my eyes all i heard was just give me a baby and i'm giving you $25,000 like the $25,000 is the the money that i'm giving you to basically handle the awkwardness so of you just, having sex with me so you're just not going to be in the, the kid's life I like, mean, you I, already I have you already have three other kids with there, so like you're gonna have your last kid. You're not gonna yeah. be in their life. The last kid's gonna be like, dang, you're my dad, and you hanging out with these ones, but you're not hanging out with me. Yeah, and I'd be like, well, it's twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I think I mean when you put it in a perspective like that, I think yes, that's right. I think I still would be I would probably still be in the kid's life because that would be kind of awkward but at right. the same time that would put it in perspective of like and then that's dang. taking you away from you and your wife exactly exactly and so when you put it in that perspective thank thank you for putting in that perspective I probably wouldn't do it now 50,000 100,000 uh, we might have to figure something out you know what I'm saying like I might do it and then just break you off a little something you'll get over it you know <laughs> Wow. Nah, just kidding. Yeah, who am I marrying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but I mean, it, when you first hear it, you're like, dang, $25,000. Like, that's it's not bad. But I mean, yeah, when you when you break it down like that and you actually think about it, thank God that we have women who actually think for it. Yeah, like, help kids are it. like worth way more than $25,000 in the long run. Like you think about all their, their, they're worth more. They're worth more and they cost more. Yeah. Like you have just food for a lifetime. Imagine how much that is going to school after, after high school, going to college. But imagine what if that kid was the kid who became a professional athlete? We'll be set for life, but we'll never know. Like $25,000. No, he might not like you. You got paid to make them. He won't know that. (laughs) He won't know that. We're making a whole podcast about it. I mean, obviously. It's on, it was no, on a Steve Harvey morning show. I'm sure that kid know. It was anonymous. So they, they, he wouldn't have, like, nobody um, would have brought it up. Like, it, his mom would be petty if she did that. Like, she was like, I recorded this. This is what your daddy think. He think you only worth $25,000. You in the league. Don't give him anything. No, because if he going to be in his life, then. She might actually be that petty. That is true. One thing that y'all women are very good at is being petty. <laughs> Am I right, fellas, or my am I right? My is in my mouth right now. Yeah, because y'all definitely, y'all be doing some super petty stuff. But yeah, I just thought that was so interesting. I mean, yeah, we, we, I feel like, I feel like this is a good transition. Because I feel like men <laughs> have to, men try to compete with pettiness because they, we want y'all to secretly know how we feel. It's hard. It's hard out here for a man. It's hard out here for you a woman You guys, too. I'm sorry, repeat that for me. I said... And I say it for the people in the back. I said I feel like a lot of men combat women's pettiness because we want y'all to see how it feels to be treated that way. Hmm. You know, I I read something. Mm, talk about it. Or seen it on TikTok. I can't remember. Oh lord. So it probably <laughs> so, was TikTok. Right. Probably was TikTok. So it was this. Um. It was some someone said something about a man guys are more petty than females because they will get turned down by a female mm-hmm. and like glow up 
mm-hmm. and purposely try to get back at the female once that the female likes them. Like, like later down the line, like they end up but thinking that, that they're cute. I see that. Is that petty though? Because that is the story of my life. Okay, because I was I was ugly. I just glowed up. You know, you know what I'm saying. I mean, as as Jack Harlow says in in the song "Industry Baby," he says. I feel like I kind of have something to do with that. He but. said, "My glow up came later." <laughs> I'm just out here getting cuter. So I'm just out here getting cuter. People notice the glow. First of all, I was getting cute before I met you. But I guess, but because now that we're into this stage of our life, yes, I'll give you the credit that you deserve. You are part of my glow up for sure. You give me a glow too. See, when you say it like that, I can't even be petty. But but to answer, to go back to what you said, because you're trying to make me not say what I'm going to say by showering me and gassing me right now. Gas alert. We should add like a gas beep. Like, get gas, 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 gas. I think that's kind of corny, actually. Let's move on. Anyways, so (laughs) to answer your question. Yes, in a way, I feel like men do do that because why? Back then, they didn't want me. Now that I'm on, they all on me. Why y'all trying to? That's not how it goes. It don't matter. I (laughs) paraphrased. Okay. Preachers paraphrase scripture all the time, so I could paraphrase a rap song. So what I'm saying is, why is it that when men glow up, women all of a sudden want to be a part of that? All glow of a sudden, after... ding, ding, ding. You hear it? <laughs> the name of the podcast. All, all of, of a sudden. Why is it that when men glow up, then women who shot them down later on in life, all of a sudden <laughs> want to hop on the wave? Why is that, Nakara? I think that it's because they kind of probably low key had an admiration already, like a, just a little bit, just by you trying before it it, it gave them like a little some, and then Fuck later, the cat, but all right, later like you glow up, they remember that and they're like, wow, he got it, he tried to get at me. So, so y'all are being petty by saying because y'all y'all be doing that too. Like, oh, he uh he, he tried to holler at me back in seventh grade, girl. Goodbye. Anyways, but like that's that's the thing that I don't understand. So it's like the personality is not like for me. My personality hasn't really changed from from, from even middle school. Now some of my behaviors, yeah, but like my personality, the way I've been, has always been the same, right? And so there were so many girls that like. I tried to talk to that they just was like, boy, no, nah. because I was, you know what I'm saying? I had a little neck and a big head and my teeth was a little gapped and I wasn't, you know, but I was still athlete. I still was cold. I still was funny, but none of them wanted me. And then I got to college, my teeth straightened up. You know what I'm saying? I started getting a couple. I ain't, I ain't never had no pecs, but you know what I'm saying? I, I started growing into who I wanted to be. I started being successful. And then people was like, oh, uh, you know, I've always had a crush. I gotta add the effect. Oh, you know, I've always had a crush <laughs> on you since you was like in middle school, high school. And I think you're cute. I wanna know if you wanna go on a date. And I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> you rejected me so many times. But that's but the thing is, the same can be done for women though. Because there's some women in some women in middle school. I don't know. I've never really like tried to talk to somebody. Like I've never talked to was an initiator for guys. Like I know there are some females out there that you know that do, but I've never been the the one to do that. And why is that, Nakara? I don't know. I just like maybe because I was shy. But I just she trying to play y'all right now. She said you literally like. You can admit you can be you can talk on the podcast and tell people that you was really like that. Everybody went to talk to me. That's that's what it was. Look, it, everybody went to talk to me. You know, cause I was that girl. Like, I was cute. I always been cute. You ain't gotta lie, y'all. I'm actually not that big headed. But if I, I mean, I, no, like, she's really not. I good. just, I guess guys would approach me, but like, not even all the time. Like. Um, I mean, they ain't approaching you no more because they'll get hit with that. And how, I, at. how you know? How you figure? Oh, they could be. They could try to slide in your DMs. Approach, <laughs> approach her while you with me and see what happens. 
No, I'm just playing. That's like a form of insecurity, but. <laughs> <laughs> no. But yeah, no, but that's I, I think that but have have you ever run into an incident where you started to glow up? Or I mean you probably had a glow up, but you probably had friends who like people thought was ugly in middle school, high school. I hate using that word, but and then they got to like college and growing up in adult days and they like really look good and like now you see that guys like them a lot. Do you have friends like that? Um, all my friends are cute. Mm, we all used to slay. Yeah, I like if I could be honest, my friends are like I don't know, like they're just definitely um I take pride in my friends. Like, you know, I'm That's very true. like I take pride in my I'm friends. I'm very too, but proud of the friends that I have and none, none of my friends are ugly first of all. Um, I but feel like they, every girl says that, but like, but every, they're not really the initiators either. Like, who? Never mind. <laughs> I was about to say, I know a couple of your friends. Oh my god, like, that's so funny. I, I was like, I know a couple of your friends who are definitely initiators. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we're not gonna talk about that. But anyway, um, yeah, that just like kind of blew my mind. But yeah, we're gonna move on. The next question. <laughs> You don't have to say names. We can remain anonymous. I feel like your friends already know exactly. I mean, who I had about. this one friend that was like, I mean, she and I'm she proud. She's like she'll tell you. She I can call her right now. She'll tell you like she's not afraid to go after what she wants. Exactly, and, and we need more women like that because men, we can't be doing all the initiating. It's twenty twenty one. The Bible says okay. That a I mean, man who finds a man who finds oh, I thought you a, said man a man who, who finds, finds a, man. a wife finds a good thing. No, that's it that's doesn't facts. say a woman who finds a husband is, finds a good thing. It says a man who finds a wife finds a good thing. I just like I like I've never like before I wasn't a Bible thumper. I'm not a Bible thumper now, but I would definitely say that like. I'm I believe in that like a man who finds a wife finds a good thing you picked me up literally <laughs> like I literally picked you up you literally in a lift drove to my house and picked me up in a lift and oh, we, yeah, yeah I was about to say make sure you tight. emphasize on that I was working when I met you <laughs> right so, I'm like can we make it clear yeah, like let's yeah. make it clear I just pull up and just stalk her I was working at the mm-hmm. time but no I agree with you uh, yeah. I agree with that statement for sure like a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and God and, I feel like God has something to do with like everything to do with that yeah you know especially when you when he's in the center and you have him his you have your mind set and you have your intentions set on that you're like you're gonna find your wife, you mm-hmm. know, and your husband will find you. I don't think that necessarily that you have to just um, go for somebody because they look good, you know, because if that was the case. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's no. crazy. I'm just like. That's, there is a bunch of people who would disagree with you, first of all, because you're talking about somebody who tried, but that's true. When I met you, you weren't attractive at all. To you. You. To you, and that's the crazy thing, y'all. Man, this is how this is how we work. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes girls you weren't attractive. You. you, I wouldn't say you weren't attractive at all, but you just weren't attractive at all to me. That's literally what I just said. Like you weren't my. But type. am I attractive to you now? And am I your type now? Very much so. Yes, sir. So <laughs> very fellas, much so. You know what I'm saying? They might they might doubt you. Hey, Amen. There's a there's a sermon in this right now. I feel like we should get an organ playing right now. <laughs> they might doubt you. Hey, Amen. They might not think that you the one, but they don't know what they want until you present it to them. She didn't know what she wanted. She didn't know she needed a little sip of juice until all of a sudden, Mister Sutton came in. <laughs> But to be honest with you, it wasn't even like that because it was like, oh, we became friends and then thing, then we just then we became where we are right now. But at the same time, it's like, you know, this is this is a this is a word of encouragement for any brothers and sisters out there. You know, what I'm saying that 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 don't know 
that they the one, but they really the one. You can get her. To all my fellas, you can get her. Because you never know. You never know what can happen. You never know. I feel like women could could can break the ice too. I've, I've, women can break the ice, but it depends on what you mean by that. Like if you see if you see a dude, not you, because it's all it's raps for you, but <laughs> <laughs> but like if a if a woman sees a dude that she finds attractive and finds cool looking, oh he look good. You don't think that it's her place to go and talk to him? No, it's not. Cause men are hunters. Oh, like but, if but if she if thinks were, that he's attractive, then do you think that he may not see her? I mean, that's a, for every one male, <laughs> like there's if, three women though. So you know what I'm saying? So it's like a lion's gonna seize his prey before his prey sees his lion. But you know, I'm glad that you brought that up because you know who really does the hunting in the lion kingdom? The lioness. <laughs> So women, I'm just saying it sounds That's me. you to you you don't see the lioness do as much hunting as the oh, lion. But you do. You gotta watch National Geographic. I do watch National Geographic. Oh well, you you watching the, you must be watching that the black one. <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> the ghetto one. No, but like I, I I I agree though. I honestly think that men men should make that first step. But at the same time, like if, if like you said, if a woman sees what she wants. Like she shouldn't have to like not go up and talk to him because I think if the the conversational piece can be given by anybody, but to initiate that further, I think it could be a man's place, but I also think it could be a woman's place. It could be anything. I mean, the conversation starter, yeah, but like go, straight up going to a guy and saying, "Oh, you look good. Can I get your number?" That's a no for me. Well, that's because and that's you've not never just me being. That's not me being biased, but that's just like. I just believe that if a man sees you and he wants you, he's going to go for you. Like, mm-hmm. if there's no reason that um, a female should have to go out her way to do that. Like, yeah. if you if a guy wants you, he's like, he's literally going to approach you and initiate. That's true. But what if a woman wants you? Should he initiate? Or there was one t- okay, you know what? There was one time that I actually did do the initiating. It was in college, and um, because <clears throat> women be there was a guy that I actually slid in his DMs, you know, mm-hmm. and I like, and I approached him on some. You looked nice today, because he like well actually so, so you actually, approached this him is, this on is what social happened. media you didn't even talk to this him is what happened so he approached me told me i looked nice mm. i had crushed on him so i slid in his dms and i was like thank you for telling me i looked nice today um you actually look nice yourself Chop here's my number so I, like i i think that yes if i look back on it, it was but that, at the same Chop time game, that was booty. my first merry-go-round like that's my that's my first time going for somebody i normally never do right mm. so it worked um of course it did we right? end up we we ended up like kicking it off having a few dates i mean it worked and for then a the bit. next thing i know he's hitting me up for favors for favors Exactly. Like he hit me up for like, like to borrow money or to like. Oh damn! You borrow, out here, expo- like, damn, you out here exposing my man's. Oh my goodness! We didn't have to go that far, Lord. But I'm saying, like, if you take, if you pull a man's man card, yeah. You know, like if you like if you if a woman like approaches a man in, in a man's shoes, like where they were. You trying to play a different role, yeah. the man's going to play that role. Like, he's going to lose his man card. Yeah. Like, now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, <laughs> now all of a sudden, he feel like he wants you to pay for dates. He wants you to um, borrow him money or use, let him use your car. Like, duh, you approached him. Dang, that's crazy that... You just out here exposing these men out here. I didn't say your name, so. But if you hear this, hey. (laughs) Not hey. (laughs) All right, so we wrap it up to the end of the episode. But I want to end with something. Um, I think that would be cool. It's like a little game. 
but it's not really a game. It's like a questions game. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be two scenarios, but we are gonna do that, um, and then we are gonna wrap up the end of this episode. Um, before we do that, thank y'all so much for tuning in, man. We appreciate y'all. We got more episodes every week. We dropping episodes every week. Now we're gonna play our little game. Usually we would call this "Would You Rather," but I'm gonna call it "What Would You Do." And we talked a little bit about this before, but I'm what curious. What would you do if your son's at home crying on alone in the bedroom floor because he's hungry? You out here? We finna get copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so check this out. So I saw this funny meme, right? I saw this funny meme on uh, on Instagram or Facebook, one of the two. And it said, um, what would you do? Or no, it didn't say what would you do. It said, say you were taking a poop at the crib and a robber came in to break in your house. Would you Would you try to stop him? But would you wipe first? Would you wipe first or would you just try to stop him? Yeah, I'm definitely wiping first. <laughs> I mean, but look, if you put it in perspective, I feel like everybody says they're going to wipe first. But if you hear like a robber in there trying to take all your stuff and then like <laughs> you, you hear the TV go off, you hear them leaving like, hey, grab the grab the TV, grab the laptop, grab the, 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 the. you finna wipe first. Yeah, I'm going to hurry up and I mean, if I got the toilet. First of all, when I sit down. On the toilet, I always have some. I grab the toilet paper first before I even do anything. So that means I already wait, got wait, some wait, paper wait, in hold my on, hand. Hold on. So you grab the toilet paper before you even start pooping? Exactly. You know why I do that? Because sometimes you might be out of toilet paper. It might be in the next room or underneath the cabinet. That way you don't got to try to figure that part out. You get comfortable first. It didn't do what you got to do. So I'm already having. Toilet paper in my hand. So you mean to tell me I'm just going to drop the toilet paper and I wipe my butt real well, quick? Well, first of all, when I asked this question and when I thought it is to bring it up on our first episode, I didn't think, I didn't know that you just <laughs> keep toilet paper on your hand before you use the bathroom. Like, usually normal people would like sit down and look and be like, okay, I got toilet paper. Let me handle my business. Right? What did normal people do that? I, I didn't know that you just like unravel it first. And then just sit there with toilet paper in your hand the whole time you're doing business. So you got toilet paper in one hand, phone in the other? Uh, first of all, I don't poop with my phone in my hand. That's that, that be you. I feel like that's well, Every cat. time I call you in the morning, you be on the toilet. When you call me, I ain't on the toilet. Yes. I have to start my day <laughs> with a nice, friendly cleanse. And it just be so ironically that every day that you call me, you wait till I get in the bathroom. Like, you know I'm in the bathroom. Like, let me, I just woke up. Let me, Because every time I wake up, all right, people, every time I wake up, we family at this point. Every time I wake up, I have to get my morning poop in. You know what I'm saying? I have to get my morning poop in or I'm just going to feel like bleep the entire day. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 so you have your routine to poop yeah. and I have mine. That's I got to so- have my, to- I may have my phone in there every once in a while. But I always got to have my toilet paper in my hand so I can be ready real quick. Ready real quick? Like, do you get... Do Not you just, real do quick, Do people, but like, intrude while you use the bathroom no, on a regular I'm basis? No, I'm saying... So I have it ready in case... Because not all the time. But sometimes it'd be, like, a little bit of toilet paper left on a roll. And then mm-hmm. the rest of it be in the, in, underneath the cabinet. So I'm making sure I got some a good enough amount of toilet paper to do what I got to do after I'm using the restroom. So you don't think that, like, looking at it first would be any different? Like, it just... <sighs> I need to make sure that I got some in my hand and we ready to go. All right. Just like when I change diapers. Like I don't have any kids, but when I like when I would have my goddaughter, she's probably trained now, thank you, Jesus. But when I changed her, I made sure that everything was in order. I had the wipes out, pulled out mm-hmm. the pack, I had the diaper spread out and nice and laid flat before yeah. and this is before I changed her butt. So that's just like that's just the routine of mine. I just make that's, sure everything is good. That's very interesting. I I would have never, I would have never guessed that at all. Like that's <laughs> that is very interesting because yes, I keep my phone on me because the bathroom for a man, and I and I know because you know I got a lot of married She's friends. Sanctuary. It's our it's our <laughs> fortress of solitude. <laughs> this is the only place in the entire house that we can get some alone time. It's it's the only place where we can be mano y mano 
with ourselves. Sometimes we like to watch videos or get caught up on different things without being interrupted, without any distractions. Because when you're in the bathroom, no one's supposed to distract you, right? So, like, for me, I I don't know what I would do. Now, if I heard somebody say, oh, he got a PS5, grab the PS5, I ain't wiping. I'm running straight at that. <laughs> I'm running straight out there and I'm getting my game back because listen, yeah, I look, it's it's hard out here. Ooh, he got a, a flat screen. I'm not wiping. Maybe they'll put it down when they see me walking out with toilet paper in my butt. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe they'll be like, oh, this dude is crazy. He don't even wipe before he come out the bathroom. And I'm like, yeah, put my stuff down. Like, you never know. So for me, it's kind of up in arms. Like, they went in there and they be like, oh, he got food in the fridge. Then maybe I might wipe first, you know what I'm saying, and, and do a little thing. But my thing is, it, it depends on the situation because you don't know, like, maybe if they got a gun or, like, what if they, you know, you don't know what they expect. How many of them is it? I can take two, but three, that might be a lot. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I got to unlock my my inner Kevin Hart where he was like, <laughs> <laughs> when he made the joke about having guns all over the house. I already knew where you were going with this. <laughs> Wait, let me flush the toilet one last time. Gun compartment, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that—that's the type of situation that made me think. Like I live in North Minneapolis, so I, I always gotta stay ready, you know. Mm. But maybe I might, you know. I mean, who never know? I might start keeping toilet paper in my hand before I start. That's just a very interesting. That's a really interesting like concept. Like you just like I just stay ready. You never know. You never know what it's just gonna <laughs> just go all over the place or like what. I'm confused. Like it's just an interesting. I don't know. Like. I just, I don't know. I think it's just a habit I've created, like, or I've developed was just to always stay ready so I don't got to get ready. Like, you, you know. You just don't want to, after you done, you just so relieved that you don't want to take the time to pull the toilet paper off? I don't even think about it like that anymore. I just do it. I think that's probably why I started, though. Um <laughs> <laughs> I, I already honest. know this is going to be a large load. Let me grab my toilet paper early so um, that I'm yeah. not tired. <laughs> I just, and then a lot of times, like, if I mean, I don't know if it's his TMI or, or not, but. We all family. We I would, I would pee first. So I would wipe from that and then I would grab some, some more toilet paper for the second part of the story. So there you go. I yeah. normally I mean, would have toilet paper for that. But I would, I mean, I always, out of toilet paper so fast. I always start, you know, I always start off with toilet paper just so for whatever reason, I just do it. I don't, sometimes I just be just, I don't know, I'm an organized person. I like to. Yeah. I feel that. like, yeah, it's so funny. Like when you, you feel like, you know, somebody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel like, you know, them in and out and then you find new things. Like I find new things about you all the time. Like. You yeah. stay with toilet paper in your hand when you're in the bathroom. Like, that is an interesting concept to me. Like, for me, it's like I handle my business first, and then I check. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. But there are times where I do be tired where that that technique might come in handy because I be tired. I don't look. I use the bathroom, and I realize, dang, ain't no toilet paper in here. Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I start yelling. Now, hey, what you going to do with nobody home? It's gonna be like it's gonna be like somebody trying to steal my PS5. I'm gonna have to run out the bathroom. Yuck. Hey, listen. What what else am I supposed to do? That's why. That's exactly or you why find a I towel. make sure <laughs> nasty. I heard somebody, um, it was like a status on Facebook. If you don't have no toilet paper, if you use the last bit of piece of your toilet paper, what you gonna do? And then it was like, is are you gonna grab a towel? So I see some people say they're gonna use the the uh the roll from the toilet paper, like the cardboard roll. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. It, it, it was only it was only two small sheets left. Single single back when you know what I'm saying it was hard times. It was the Man, real thing. I'm one. getting in the shower. It was two that that could be a possibility too, but at the time <laughs> I wasn't at I was at a friend's house, and so I had to do what, what I had, you had to, to do. What you had to do, do, do. And, yeah. Do what you had to do when you had to do, do. Right. So what I did was, <laughs> easy technique for anybody who ever is caught in this situation, this is what you do. You take two pieces or whatever pieces that's left, you put them to the side. 
You wet the cardboard. Then you wipe. Bam. Ball it up where it goes into the toilet and you flush it so nobody knows what you did. You get rid of the evidence. First of all, the, and the, the toilet is going to clog, sir. No, not if, you, not if you ball it thin, long way. If you ball it in a ball, it's going to clog. But if you ball it thin, long way, it'll slide right through the pipes. Don't ask me how I know this. I'm just saying I watch a lot of... <laughs> crime scene shows so I know how to get rid of evidence real smooth. This man is a poop clerk. And I, <laughs> that's going to be the title. That's going to be the second half title of this episode. <laughs> the poop crook. <laughs> Crappy crime scenes. <laughs> but no. So like that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? You you wet the cardboard make it wet and then you, you, you handle your business right? And then, then you use the two sheets or the one sheet right? Just to pretty much dry it up. Bam, booty clean. Don't thank me now, thank me later. <laughs> that's that's what I'm mean, hey, hey, listen, that's that's I hard. Cannot. Cause I mean, what else are you supposed to do? Especially like imagine if you at somebody else's house. Like you don't want to be like decorative decorative towels. <laughs> <laughs> you t- <laughs> see <Sorry>. that's the- <laughs> Now y'all get to see the car be snorting. So now y'all get to see that for real. So you t- <laughs> so you telling me if you had somebody else's, t- ain't nobody gonna let you use the bathroom in their house after listening to this. So you- <laughs> if you don't, oh my god, hey. So if y'all had people, if y'all had the car at y'all house, make sure there's some toilet paper when she come over because you gonna use a directive of tap. What if somebody did that to you? Like what if when we. <laughs> I mean, we better have some toilet paper because, I mean, you just, what you going to do? What you, what Here, you, what? Here's my, you do my technique. I would rather you do my technique than do your technique. That technique sounds like it might hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on what side you use to wipe. But you going to use the decorative tiles? What you going to do with the decorative tiles after you're done? Since we're talking about getting rid of crime scenes, I'm very curious how you're going <laughs> to get rid of this. How, how are you going to get rid of a, a poopy decorative tile? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take, because you know how they always had the little wash, de- decorative washcloths. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use that one. And then, I know everybody got little trash bags. So you going to, <laughs> so you going to throw away, I don't know if people heard you because you so was a little further away from Maybe rinse it out real like, good. I don't know what I would Oh, do. my God. I'd probably rinse it out. And Hold on. Put it Are in y'all hearing this? She said <laughs> that she's going <laughs> she to wash the decorative towel. What you going to do? You going to hang it back up? Man. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> no, nah, I'll probably just put it in a dirty clothes hamper and tell them I use their, uh, the towel to, there's a little spill on the floor. A little spill that that smell like dookie. <laughs> There's a little spill on the floor, but it smell like dookie. I'm gonna cover it up. I'm gonna use the caress body wash they got in the shower. You've thought of everything. I don't even. <laughs> I I feel like that's the perfect. That's the perfect topic to end on. Like that's the perfect topic to end a podcast on. The car uses decorative tiles. To wipe her butt. First of all, no I've never paper. had to do that, but I'm definitely not using no toilet paper uh, roll I'm just to saying, wipe my butt. Evidence eliminated. Cardboard. No more. There's no embarrassment of having to tell somebody that you had to use their decorative towels to wipe your butt I'm going to just say something spells on the floor. And it smell like doo-doo. No, it don't smell like doo-doo no more. Oh, you, you cleaned you it. You put the water on it first. Yeah, you right. Put you the water it. on it first. Wash it like you washing up. You know, rinse it out real good with some soap a couple times, yeah. and then bada boom, bada bang. That you have a point. Not that thing. Still using my cardboard, but yes, <laughs> we think that that that's a, that's smooth. You clean that out perfectly. That's smooth. That's smooth. That's super smooth. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that on that note, that ends our first episode of the podcast. We hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much for tuning in to all of a sudden podcast, the pilot episode where we talked about everything from. Uh, men approaching women to crappy crime scenes or what'd you call it doo-doo crime scenes is that what you uh poop crooks poop cooks poop poop crooks words are important (laughs) but yeah so we hope you tune in next week we're gonna be right here same place same spot 
tune into the episode. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and follow us on all social medias and on the streaming platforms. Thank y'all. We. Oh, you want to say something before we get out? No. Nah, she too busy thinking about whose decorative towel she going <laughs> to use. But we appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all next week. And we out.